This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 527. Stop Calling Yourself Gross by Nighar Fanuni of nigharfanuni.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is the podcast where I act as your very own personal narrator and read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online, including Ben Greenfield Fitness, Nerd Fitness, and today's author, Nagahar Fanuni. Now, before we get to the post, don't forget, we give away a book to a random person on our mailing list on the first of every month. So if you wanna be in the drawing, make sure you're on our mailing list at oldpodcast.com. I'll give you another quick reminder at the end of the show, but for now, Let's keep this short and sweet and start optimizing your life. Stop Calling Yourself Gross by Nighar Fanuni of nigharfanuni.com. You know what's gross? Racism is gross. Homophobia, xenophobia, sexism, gross. Oppression and discrimination are gross. Telling people what they should and shouldn't do with their bodies, gross. Convincing people there is something inherently wrong with them in order to turn a profit? Gross. Ketchup is gross. Don't argue with me. But you, your body, your body fat, cellulite, and wrinkles? Not gross. I got into this conversation with my dear friend recently because she was trying on clothes in front of me and kept calling her body gross. It pained me to hear this coming from someone I love so dearly, someone who I think is both a goddess and a queen. Now I get it. I get that she's not thrilled about her body fat or cellulite situations. I get that she's frustrated and wants to change her body. And all of that is okay. It's okay to be displeased with aspects of yourself and want to change them in some way. What's not okay is the belief that we are obligated to in order to fit into boxes that were created by societal constructs. Boxes that very few of us fit into comfortably. As a body image consultant and fitness coach, I think we do the term body positivity a grave disservice when we assume it means that loving ourselves precludes us from ever wanting to change. We, as leaders, can often do harm by insinuating that self-love means you're completely in love with the appearance of cellulite or stretch marks. The truth is, you can love yourself as a whole person without necessarily loving every part of your body. In fact, during the beginning stages of learning to step into a space of self-love, the idea that you have to love everything can feel really intimidating. It feels too big, too impossible, especially if you spent many years hating yourself and feeling never good enough. But if you can learn to meet your perceived quote-unquote flaws without judgment and attached meaning, this will go a long way towards standing in your power. As we embark on a journey to feel powerful and at home in our bodies, it's important that we learn to reframe this language and see our features for what they are without a negative connotation. The leap from body hatred to body love is pretty far for many of us, especially when those body image issues run deep. Therefore, the intention isn't necessarily to love at first, rather, to not hate. We must affirm that the idea that our body fat, cellulite, wrinkles, and stretch marks are quote-unquote bad or gross isn't part of our inherent nature. We didn't decide that, nor did we create the unattainable standards of perfect with which we're constantly inundated. It isn't our birthright to demean and disrespect ourselves with hurtful language, to strive forever on end to meet an arbitrary standard of beauty that constantly changes and varies. You weren't born to regard yourself as gross, to look in the mirror and hate what you see. You were born with radiance and magic. But the first step towards manifesting that magic and stepping into a space of self-love and worthiness might not actually be love itself. For many of us, The first step is truth, a recognition of reality without added bias and learned labels. Can we look in the mirror and learn to see ourselves with presence and truth rather than disgust? I'll tell you honestly that I don't love my cellulite. It doesn't define me or keep me from living in my fullness. I'm not obsessed with getting rid of it, and I don't think that doing so would make me more lovable or desirable. I don't look at my cellulite and think, gross, but I also don't look at it and think, You're so beautiful, cellulite. I love you so dearly. I accept that it's part of my body and I love myself as a whole person. I love my body as a whole unit, but I don't gaze upon the dimples in my butt with fondness and reverence. I'm just not there. And that has to be okay. Rather than beating myself up for not loving my cellulite, hello and other ways we make ourselves feel inadequate, 
I understand that sometimes love isn't the goal. Sometimes simply detaching from a narrative that steals from us is all we need to do in order to take back our power and feel alive in our bodies. So instead of pinching your belly fat and saying gross or looking at your cellulite in the mirror and thinking gross, try just calling it what it is. Touch those stretch marks and just say stretch marks. Pinch that fat and literally just say fat. Do this with as much openness, awareness, and curiosity that you can muster. It doesn't have to be good or bad. It can just be what it is. If we can do this, we can start to tap into the vibrant aliveness of our bodies. We can begin to see how miraculously interwoven our physical and emotional bodies are, and we can step onto the path of awakening that teaches us to love ourselves as whole, multidimensional beings. And none of that is gross. You just listened to the post titled, Stop Calling Yourself Gross by Nighar Fanuni of nigharfanuni.com. Ms. Fanuni is absolutely right in that so much of what we consider beautiful is learned. There are some really fascinating studies that have been done by psychology professors where they'll look at the optimal body shape that both men and women prefer. And what they found is that really hasn't changed over the long term, that our natural instincts are to favor certain body types. But what we do know is that these can, of course, be influenced, influenced by images in the media, for example. So if we think back to the 1970s, what was really in was a very thin, wayfish look, especially for women. A model named Twiggy was considered very popular because she was really, really thin, and so people started to strive to look like that. But that was mostly in the Western world. When you think about other countries, other continents, being that skinny is not attractive at all. In other cultures, having a little bit of what sometimes they'll call extra padding is actually considered beautiful. And in fact, for hundreds if not thousands of years, having a little bit of extra weight on a person was considered very attractive. If you think about it, when food was scarce, which it was for most of human history, by carrying extra fat, you're actually showing that you have access to food. So it may be a sign of wealth and health. But nowadays, being fit or having low to no body fat, no cellulite, no stretch marks, well, that's considered the standard. But I wouldn't be surprised if this changes again. We've come a long way since the 1970s where that wayfish look was in. It had a slight resurgence in the early 2000s, so I would expect fully that carrying a little bit of extra weight may be considered beautiful again. So as Ms. Vanuni was saying, why pay attention to those things? Look at yourself, see what you'd like to change about yourself without any bias, or what the media is saying about what's in right now. Look at yourself and ask, is this who I want to be? And then go from there. Before I go, I wanted to quickly remind you we do book giveaways on the first of every month to random people on our mailing list. So if you want to be a part of that, plus get some free spreadsheet tools from us and lots more, come by oldpodcast.com and join the weekly newsletter. It's totally free and a great way to show your support. And make sure you join before the end of the month. Again, you can join at oldpodcast.com. Dot com. That's it from me for today. I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thank you as always for listening. Thank you for being a subscriber. I'll be back here tomorrow as usual. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.